HMV Music is a big global chain of music retail stores. They sell CDs, DVDs, vinyl, and music accessories like headphones, MP3 players, and so on. Um, not very big in Australia anymore. They closed most of their stores here. Um, but at its peak in the 1990s, they had about 320 stores around the world. However, one thing that music stores have suffered with in recent times is changing consumer preferences. And in 2012, digital musical sales actually surpassed physical musical sales for the first time. So that means that people were buying more songs on iTunes and Google Music than they were actually um, hard copy CDs in a shop. And that doesn't even include uh, pirated music either. So that's just the music that people have paid for. But basically no one's buying physical music um, so much anymore. Secondly, consumers also began using streaming services instead of buying CDs and DVDs. So you can stream music on Spotify without ever buying a CD. You've got access to hundreds of thousands of songs. You can watch movies and TV shows on Netflix that um, you don't need to go and buy the DVD. And likewise with YouTube, you can go and watch um, anything on YouTube. A lot of that means you won't actually buy the DVD of that show. So you can see this is being affected, uh, so the uh, effect uh, on HMV sales. Looking at their sales and revenues in US billion dollars in 2008, they earned $3.70 billion in revenue. That went down to 2.88 in 2009. Went back up again, had a good year in 2010. But by 2012, it had really tailed off. And in fact, it's less than half, than it, was, half the, uh, than it was in 2008. Revenues went down to $1.42 billion. So clearly, they're not selling as many CDs and DVDs as they used to. And in fact, they went into administration. So we've looked at some, several companies really that have gone into administration. Let's explore that in a little more detail. What does it actually mean? Well, it means that HMV's management thought the company was insolvent. And that's not a word in our Year 12 accounting course, but what we use instead is, we'd say an insolvent company is one that's got poor liquidity. What does that mean? It means the business's ability to meet its short-term debt as they fall due isn't very good. They're not gonna be able to pay their bills, and when you can't pay your bills, you are broke. So let's have a look at some ratios that we do in Year 12 Accounting and apply them to HMV. So let's look at their liquidity. So in 2012, the year before they went into administration, we've learned about the working capital ratio, the quick asset ratio, and the cash flows ratio. Let's do the working capital ratio. Current assets divided by current liabilities. You go and get the HMV balance sheet, we'll end up putting in these numbers here. And we'll get a ratio of 0.71. What about the quick asset ratio? Well, we change the formula a little bit. We do our current assets, but we take out stock and prepaid expenses. Now, HMV is a retailer, so most of their assets are going to be stock uh, or current assets will be. And for current liabilities, we're going to take out the bank overdraft. And when we do that, we get a very different figure. What we can see here is total current assets in, in the used debt in this ratio was over 200 million. But if you take out stock, well, we've got hardly any current assets. And the problem there is, well, they've still got a whole bunch of current liabilities that are urgent and need to be paid. And that ratio is only 0 0.3. Lastly, we've got the cash flows ratio. That's where we take how much net cash do we get from our operating activities. So from running our business on day-to-day -day trading of goods and services. And we divide that by current liabilities. Now, if we did that, they actually lost money from operating activities. But those current liabilities still need to be paid. So this ratio is actually a negative of 0.07. But what does all this mean? Well, not, we can't just calculate ratios. In fact, there's no marks in year 5 accounting for that. But can we explain them? So the working capital ratio of 0.71, what does that mean? It means that for every dollar of current liabilities the HMV has, they only had 71 cents in current assets to pay them. So if there are a dollar of current liabilities, there's only 71 cents in current assets, and that's a disaster. Any number less than one is really bad, because by definition, they don't have enough current assets to pay those debts that are due in the next 12 months. What about the quick asset ratio? What does that mean? Well, that was 0 0.30. That meant for every dollar of urgent current liabilities, the business only had 30 cents in quick current assets to pay them. So in this case, if we sort of refine our current liabilities to our most urgent, and say for every dollar of those, how many quick or uh, current assets are there? There's only 30 cents. So we're going to have a massive uh, 70 cent uh, shortfall here um, where we can't pay our most urgent liabilities. Lastly, the cash, flow, cash flows ratio was negative 0.07. What does that mean? It means for every dollar of current liabilities we have, operating activities actually generate negative 7 cents to pay them. 
So that means that if we look at our cash as a big silo, and money can come in one of three ways. It either comes in through operating or investing, so buying and selling non-current assets, or we can go and borrow money or pay it back. Um, it can come in there as well. And what happens is it needs to leave to pay our current liabilities. So for every dollar of current liabilities, we're actually getting negative seven cents of operating activity money for our day-to-day -day trading. And in fact, that arrow is pointing the wrong way. There's no money going in here. Money's actually going out. Now this gets a little bit worse when you go and look at their cash flow statement and see that well, investing activity is only bringing in 16 cents for every uh, dollar of current liabilities and financing activity is all losing money as well. So together, these three numbers don't add up anywhere near to one. In fact, if you add them up, they add up to zero. So there is no cash to pay for current liabilities. So clearly, this company is going broke. They don't have any current assets or enough to pay their, uh, their current liabilities and they're not generating enough money at all to pay them uh, during the year from their operating activities. So let's look at administration. What does that mean? Well, it means that HMV appointed a special type of an accountant called an administrator to manage the finances of the business for at least the next 28 days. It could be longer, it could be shorter. The business might finish and close, but um, companies can be in administration for a while. So what happens is you, the company appoints an administrator, so usually one of the big four accounting firms. So you might have heard of PricewaterhouseCoopers or Deloitte, KPMG or Ernst & Young. And what happens now is management no longer runs the company. Effectively, the administrator runs the company. And what they're really doing is working on behalf of the company's creditors. So all the people that HMV owes money to, the main purpose of the administrator is to try and get money to pay these people back. And in this case, the main debt owing was actually $140 million uh, pounds, actually, to two banks. One was called Lloyd's Bank, and the other one is the Royal Bank of Scotland. So they're the main creditors or people that are owed money in this case. So what uh, the administrator can do to repay those people back, and in this case, um, HMV used a company called Deloitte. They can go and borrow more money, so find a bank will give them some more money to pay off the old debts. You can sell the entire business to a new owner, so find someone who wants to buy it and run it, but then they become responsible for the unpaid debt. You could just sell some of the company's assets. You could find a buyer for, say, some buildings, maybe some of the inventory, some of the retail equipment. You could cut costs, so make people redundant, find cheaper rent, and so on, close some stores. Or, worst case scenario, you become a bad debt, you go broke. And what that means is the creditors will only get a few cents in the dollar, and the rest is written off as a bad debt. So what did HMV's administrators decide to do? Well, well first of all, they closed 36% of the shops. So they really cut back on the number of stores. And then they actually fired 60% of the employees. So really, they've cut back on a lot of running and day-to-day -day costs of keeping the stores open. They then went and borrowed 15 million pounds from another bank called Hilco Capital. And they got a 19 million, dollar, uh, 19 million pound loan from, uh, sorry, capital contribution from their shareholders. The problem there is, well, they owe 140 million pounds. So whilst they've saved a bit of money by cutting stores and employees and they've borrowed some, they don't have anywhere near enough. So what some people said was, well, what about the company's logo? Well, the logo is actually quite famous. You might know it, you might have just seen the HMV logo or you might even know of HMV, but its logo is actually based on a very famous painting by an English artist called Francis Burrow who painted it in 1898 and it's called His Master's Voice. So you can see the painting on the screen and in the painting it's actually a painting of his brother's dog Nipper. And the story goes that uh, Francis Burrow's brother died a few years earlier and when he died he left the dog to Francis Burrow to keep, um, you know, to look after. He also gave Francis a phonograph player which is kind of like a record player or a CD player of its day and some recordings of his brother's voice made on cylinder records. So they're kind of like CDs or MP3s, basically. And what would happen is these cylinders, you would play them. You can see one slotted in there into the uh, phonograph player. So basically what's happened is the um, Francis Perot would play his record player and he'd play the records of his brother's voice. Now to a dog, a dog just hears the owner's voice or his former owner's voice. He doesn't know that the, the man's dead and not around. So what the dog would do, and you can see here's a photo of Nipper, He's looking into the record player where the noise comes out, thinking his, his dead master is around, but clearly he's not. So Barrow goes and does the painting. You can see it in the background there on his easel. And he decided to call it his master's voice. 
obviously being Nippa is listening to his master's voice. And anyway, in the next hundred years, it actually became a really big logo. It was sold to a record company in 1899 called the Gramophone Company. And the reason why it was such a good logo is because it sort of represented good sound quality. The quality of our sound is so good that a dog would think its owner was in the room. And it actually got used in a lot of different advertising uh, sort of situations and campaigns. And eventually, his master's voice got abbreviated to HMB. And that actually became the official company name in 1998 and you can see the HMV logo actually has a silhouette of the original painting there. So that's the story of the logo. So here's the problem for HMV. We owe 140 million pounds but by the time the administrator was done that only raised about 25% of the money. So where can we get the rest? Well one of the accountants said why don't we sell the Nippa logo? And that's a really interesting question. There's sort of two things we want to answer or, or sorry, ask. Is this actually an asset that we can sell? Can you sell a logo or an image or an idea? And secondly, if you can, how much is it worth? So let's have a look. So we can sell anything that's an asset. So if a business has an asset, it's an asset that you can sell. So let's look at the definition of an asset and try and figure out if a, the HMV logo meets that definition. First of all, there's got to be a resource controlled by the entity. Does HMV control it? Yes, they do. They own it. There'd be a pattern on the logo. They're the only ones that can use the nipper picture. Nobody else is allowed to use it. So they clearly control it. Two, well, is there a past event or transaction? And there is. So it might have been over 100 years ago, but the business acquired from Francis Borrow the right to the picture in 1899 and it was that long ago it wasn't even called HMV then it was called the gramophone company but clearly there's a past event so lastly is there again going to be a future economic benefit for the business in who uh, has the logo so is that true though does another business who owns it or does any logo really provide a business with future economic benefits so to answer that one, I guess what we want to sort of ask is, will an advertising logo provide a company with future economic benefits? And I think the best way to answer that is take an example. There's two shoes made from exactly the same materials. Which one sells for more? So they've got the same uh, leather, the same stitching, the same sole, same shoelaces, same color. Well, they're going to sell for the same price unless the one on the right has that logo on it. Now, if it's a Nike shoe with a Nike swoosh, it's going to sell for more because customers put value in brands. And so there I think you could say that is going to get Nike a future economic benefit. So if a logo is going to be a future economic benefit for Nike, why can't it be a future economic benefit for HMV? So now we've got our first two parts of the asset sorted. What about this third part? Is that logo providing our business with a future economic benefit? Well, you'd have to say yes. Um, we might not know that much about it, but in the UK and in, and in America as well, that's a really big logo. A logo that implies sound quality and terrific products. So I think you could argue that has a future economic benefit. Well, now we have the question, all right, if we can put it in our balance sheet, how much is it worth? So HMV, there was an article that came out that said Nipper the dog is a trademark seen as the most valuable HMV asset. Not only did people think it was an asset, they thought it was its most valuable asset worth about 50 million pounds. Now they are 140 million. They've rustled up about you know 40 odd million, so they've still got over 100 million to go. So if they could sell the logo, well they're going to wipe out half of those debts in one go, so that would be great. However, what we want to think about now is, well, Okay, just because something's got a value doesn't mean we can really sell it or can we make a decision on it. So relevant says something's relevant if it influences our future decisions or helps us evaluate past decisions. So if we can give a value of 48.7 million pounds to Nipper, is that relevant? You'd have to say yes. And that's because we're going to be able to make a decision in this case. Let's sell it. Let's sell it to repay some debts. However, reliability says all information's got to be free of opinions and estimates and based on data that can be checked or verified with a source document. Can we ver uh, verify that $48.7 million figure? Not really, that's just going to be someone's sort of uh, opinion. There's no source document we can provide to say NIP is worth this. Another expert might think that the NIPA logo is worth £100 million pounds, or maybe another expert thinks it's worth zero. So really, that figure is good, but it's a relevant figure. Is it reliable though? Probably not. Now in the end, HMV actually survived. They didn't even need to sell the logo. So what happened was the banks who were owed 140 million pounds agreed to accept only 25 cents in the dollar. 
What does that mean? Well, it means that the other 75% got written off as a bad debt. So we cover bad debts in Unit uh, 3 accounting. What's a bad debt? And it means it's an amount owed by a debtor that is written off as an expense because it's deemed as being a recoverable. And we write it off because uh, we're not going to collect any of the debt or collect only some of the debt. So in this case, the uh, Lloyds Bank and the Royal Bank of Scotland wrote off HMV as a bad debt. They weren't going to get none of it. They got some of it. They got 25% and the other 75% became a bad debt. So let's look at some questions that we can answer uh, from a real world case study of a big business that had a lot of financial trouble. When they became insolvent in 2013, was there any sign from HMV's 2012 liquidity ratios that said there was a problem? Would you have been buying shares in this company based on those ratios that we calculated? Secondly, what happens when a company goes into administration? Now that's not a topic we do in VC accounting, but it's really important. Do you understand what that means and what the goals are for the accountants who act as the administrators? And here's our important questions. Does a logo meet the definition of an asset? Could you argue that in words? Could you formulate an answer saying, I think a logo is an asset because, and giving the three parts of the definition. And lastly, how can you, if you do think a logo is an asset, how can you determine its value? Isn't there a trade-off between relevance and reliability? Now we mightn't do a logo in year 12 accounting, but we'll do things like market value of a property um, or the current value of stock. Um, whether it's gone down or up. So we want to be able to understand that when we make these judgments, there's really going to be a big trade-off between the qualitative characteristics of relevance and reliability. Can you even sell a logo? If not, does it make it an asset? That's an interesting question. Would Adidas buy the Nike logo? That doesn't make any sense. Would another company use or buy the HMV logo? Probably not. So again, just because something meets the definition of the asset in our course, does it sort of have the properties of an asset in the real world? Well, that's a question you need to be able to answer yourself.